to like the scriptures of the Hindus, but the fine go more to the physics itself. I'm going to conclude very quickly by giving you a metaphor which may perhaps <coughs> make you shudder a little bit, but so be it. How do I explain this quantum phenomena to the physicists themselves? Because when you tell a physicist, give me a physical interpretation of your quantum phenomena, because they say, we want a mathematical, if you like, like a mechanism which can explain this universe to the 10th, 9th decimal point, exactly how your computer chips works, how your DNA works, Everything can be explained, can be ex you know, given perfect, you know, explanation to the ninth decimal point, and it works tremendously, stupendously successful. But this is purely a mathematical conjecture. What is the physical interpretation of your mathematics? We ask the physicist, the quantum physicist. He's trying to give all these quantum phenomena, say we can explain and describe the world to the ninth decimal point. But what, are, what is this, this mathematical thing that you're playing with? What is the physical interpretation of this mathematics? You tell me, tell us, don't ask. We just we have learned the rules of thumb. They have generated this kind of model, this mathematical instrument that can give, if you like, description of reality, but we don't know what the reality is. This is real fact. And then you really push them hard. Of course, you must push them hard. Give us a physical interpretation of your quantum phenomena. The mathematical formalism. It's the only thing we can say is the, the mathematics we use is nothing but probability of existence. That's all we can say. It just gives you a prediction of the probability of something being there or not being there. That is the way we describe reality, full stop. Matter or these lumps are made of appearances. Let me give you a metaphor that I use in physics society at many universities, recently at Oxford University. And the boys there were studying quantum because Mr. Lacani for the first time, the quantum you know, makes sense to us. See if it makes sense to you. This is esoteric Hinduism. He says the underpinning to this reality, the world that you see is really just one, a great one, that appears as this diversity from so you say, but what is this one? What is it? What is it? Give some handle. You say, no, 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 it's difficult to define. And yet it gives, if you like, it becomes the mother of all this diversity in front of you. That one that underpins this reality is, becomes, if you like, becomes this diverse universe you experience. You say, what is that? Give us some words. And the word that came out of these ancient Hindu thinkers and modern, modern Hindu philosophers is, it is of the nature of consciousness itself. It is of the nature of existence itself. Asti, Pati are the two Sanskrit terms. And let me show you the power of these words and how it relates to consciousness in neuroscience and quantum physics in, 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 in a second. This lovely metaphor, see if you like it. Imagine, <coughs> imagine a block of transparent jelly. Well, you can be hungry, you like jelly. But this is transparent, no flavor, nothing, no coloring, nothing. Just transparent block of jelly in front of your eyes. If you looked at it, you don't see straight through it. Because it is transparent. This is the underpin of this reality. It is of the nature of existence and consciousness. But because it is homogeneous, you cannot see anything. But suppose, but the metaphor is comes with a bit of kind of you know health warning. Suppose somebody gives their whack from the side, this transparent jelly, give it a whack. You know what happens? Suddenly, in front of your eyes, the transparent blob becomes very visible because it sets up waves on the surface. And the waves are interacting with other waves. And the waves are producing some other, other kind of like subsidiary waves. And the waves are acting and interacting in front of our eyes. And you go, wow, it's come alive. I can see all this phenomena happening, things happening, coming together, disappearing, appearing, reappearing. Oh, what if it's colorful? Such suddenly the transparent blob suddenly becomes extremely visible, becomes highly diverse. Lots of waves acting and interacting. Hindu philosophy says, see my friend, the underpinning to this reality is of the nature of consciousness, of the nature of existence itself. What you are seeing, the world that you are seeing, is nothing but <coughs> existence dancing, wailing. Ex 
existence on its own can never be experienced. But if you've got a wiggle in existence, then the rails cannot become visible. And this is the world you see. It is the dance of existence, dance of consciousness. The one becoming everywhere, appearing to become so many. And all the faculties we possess, even the, the mental faculties, the intellectual faculties, are nothing but, if you like, waves within waves. So we use kind of more finer waves to understand the more kind of more crude waves. So we can kind of reflect the crude waves of the finer waves. So this is called intelligence. So this is the sense experience. This is the intelligence, making sense of the world. It's just waves within waves. And we are kind of suddenly the one that become this multitude in front of us. Living things, non-living things, intelligent things, non-intelligent things. All this is nothing but the play, like the dance of consciousness. And what I'm suggesting, you see, is resonating well with the physics. It's not the biologists. I mean, the dopants will kick me out straight away and say, come on, grow up. It's just brain that I'm But the physicists are beginning to get thrilled by it. And Erwin Schrodinger, Father Pandit, has said this repeatedly. He was an avid reader of the Upanishads of the Hindus. He said, what we are discovering at the heart of quantum physics is wiggling of existence. It resonates extremely well with the findings of Eastern metaphysics. You might think, but Mr. Lakhani, the Indian chaps, I mean, they were kind of gazing at their navels and, you know, wearing kind of blowing clothes and they didn't have Hubble telescope and electron microscopes. How did they find out all this stuff? You see, my friends, knowledge does not lie outside. Knowledge is very much inherent in all of us. You see, it is through thought experience, through like thought experiments that Einstein discovered special relativity. He didn't go flying at the speed of light. Just the thought experiment was enough for him to produce this marvelous theory. In the same way, these ancient Hindus, through the process of meditation, through the process of contemplation, they have such one pointed understanding of the nature of reality that they gleaned these, these truths in very ancient days, in modern times too. But we live in very exciting times. Do you know why? So I tell the students that I meet, I say, my friends, the fact that you have given up religion it's not a bad thing. In a way, it shows that you are fed up with the status quo. You are searching for a new exploration to the phenomena called spirituality. And the best promoter, like the best ally of rediscovering spirituality, is not the prophets of the past. It is the science of today. And now, this time, this particular revelation, if I can use the word, will inspire, thrill, not hundred or two hundred or few hundred, hundred. receives external visual information. The brain's duty is the management of the body. The brain constantly receives information from various parts of the body and also sends instructions to them. The brain, for the purpose of safeguarding the body and for contact with the external world, uses its inbuilt tools for receiving information from the environment outside of the body. These tools are called the five senses. The visual signals received through the retina from the outer world are transferred in form of an electric current to the center of the brain responsible for vision and these currents are processed as pictures and deposited into the visual memory. At the same time, certain connections between the visual and hearing memory are established and the information of each sense 
are combined together and stored in the so-called common sense. We observe that sensing had got two stages. The brain does not see the outer world directly. The retina receives the pictures like a camera and converts it to a current. The visual center of the brain then receives the current and again converts it to a picture. And the intelligence center understands the picture and then it is recorded in the memory. To see with closed eyes. Seeing the outer world requires the operation of the visual center in the brain, proper functioning eyes and a retina as well as eyelids that are open. When the eyelids are closed, the connection between the visual center of the brain and the outer world is halted. But the act of viewing does not necessarily stop. Dreaming. When a person sleeps, the connection between the visual center and the outer world is disconnected. But the visual center's memory starts operating after certain cycles and thus dreaming begins. Dreaming is to see with eyes closed. Though not seeing the outer world, but seeing an image of a metaphorical world which the brain has created by using the information stored in the common sense memory. This dreaming or seeing with eyes closed is not significantly different to viewing with open eyes. All the similar visual systems are operational. The visual nerves, the eyeballs and the retina are fully functioning. In fact, the eyeballs start moving and anything that the dreamer is seeing is followed like an actual external event by the eyeballs, as if they were reacting to these events. So eyes act in a similar way as if they were observing real external stimuli such as becoming scared, angry, escaping, and so on. Dreaming with open eyes. There are two types of dreaming with eyes open. The first type is hallucination. And hallucination is to see with open eyes the scenes invented by the brain, and since the eyes are open and conscience is operational and all senses are active, the brain cannot differentiate between the actual outer world and the scenes it has invented by itself. Numerous of research has been done in relation to severe excess production of hormones in the brain as a major factor for 